Well, the problem we have is, is one of godlessness of a certain kind. Uh, the godlessness is, in the case, for example, the case of dealing with the democratic uh, challenge of Bush, we had, it was easy. You had a fraudulent process of election. It had elements, different elements, so you could not easily pin down one element, such as the vote count, as a way of showing the fraud. You had vote suppression, you had other factors in there, all of which combined to the intent by various devices to defraud the American people of the knowledge and the ability to discriminate uh, in the way they wanted to uh, in, in vote selection. So this was a gut issue which was obvious and was, it had a lot of pent up anger behind it. So when, when people heard that as I had warned, Bush was going to come on with an attempt to steal Social Security, a lot of Democrats realized I've been right. And we, our campaign essentially was to change the Democratic Party back from an anti-Franklin Roosevelt Party to a pro-Franklin Roosevelt Party. Now, in a certain degree, we succeeded. And it, it's a little bit dangerous now to go run around and say you hate FDR in the Democratic Party. <laughs> Republicans won't trust you if you say that. They figure that you're some kind of a crook. They'll start seizing their pockets, you know, things like that. Today, the problem is still the same, but now it it's expresses itself as a broader principle. The enemy has to be defined properly. Who is the enemy? Well, Cheney is ready for the rubbish bin. He could go quickly. He's earned it. I mean, the, the Lautenbach report, uh, Lautenbach Waxman report on the way he's ripped off the American budget, the American till, by with his aid of his Halliburton associates and how he has profited by what Halliburton has done by the way of the steel business uh, is really puts him in jeopardy. He's not a popular guy. He's hated. Unfortunately, he's also feared and cowards fear him. But the enemy is not Cheney. Cheney is only a tool, as his wife describes him. <laughs> the enemy is the Venetian faction. What the problem today in economy, which has to be addressed, and this is where Democrats lose their nerve. In the, in the Senate and elsewhere, they lose their nerve. And it's not that they don't lack inspiring causes to go to, but when they know and they are informed by people like Felix Rahatn and so forth that they are treading in dangerous waters which they might not like to find themselves in, they wince. The biggest of what we have is the defect of the defection of Republicans from the Republican cause. Not the Republican Party as such, but from what the neocons represent in the Republican Party. So you have a mass defection of Republicans who cannot support what stinks. But you don't have Democrats, with a few exceptions, who are stepping up to the plate, as it is said, uh, on issues. Because they're afraid of what? They're afraid of, of the financial interests. We have to realize that the enemy of humanity today is the same enemy that Franklin Roosevelt had when he was alive, which sometimes were called the bankers, but he didn't think of the bankers, he had it right. He understood that the financial oligarchy, including the grandfather of the present president, Prescott Bush, had been the authors of funding Hitler's being put into power in Germany. That these people in the American oligarchy, the Wall Street oligarchy, the backers of Coolidge, the controllers of Hoover, uh, these were the people who had put Hitler into power and Mussolini before him and Franco afterward. These were the people 
who were prepared to support Hitler all the way and his system if he had only gone east first against the Soviet Union rather than against France and England. They turned against Hitler. Many of them didn't turn until 1940. But they began to turn against Hitler when it was learned the German military was prepared to strike westward first before striking eastward. So they became anti-Hitler because they didn't like his direction. They liked his methods, but not his direction. And they supported him by bringing fascism, Nazism, into power in Germany, and fascism into power throughout continental Europe. Now you, have, you understand then, you have to go back to deeper, that fascism, Nazism, which is a largely a product of a group known as the Syndicus International, it's a group of bankers in the Venetian tradition. These are independent family banks, family financial interests, which cluster like a slime ball together and have individuality, but they also are a slime. Okay? This is the problem. These guys have come to, come to the point where since 1939, when there was no longer, 19, uh, since there was no longer, uh, 1989, since there was no longer a Soviet Union as a contender, they felt free to destroy Western Europe and the Americas because they no longer needed Western Europe and the Americas as an economic and military strength to control the Soviet Union. Once the Soviet Union was gone, they said, History has ended, as Francis Fukuyama put it. History is now at an end. Now the empire can return. Now the empire means the Venetian model, which means the British model. It means the Anglo-Dutch liberal model, under which, in their view, the nation state either should not exist, and they intend to eliminate most nation states, which is what the real purpose was in Iraq, not to defeat Saddam Hussein, was to destroy Iraq, which they're doing. Their intent is to destroy Syria. Their intent is to destroy Iran. Their intent is to destroy Israel. The intent is to destroy every part of that region of the world and beyond. And they call them failed states. You know, why, they, why does it fail? Because it got killed. That's why it failed. Then the, what about the other states? Well, they do not want to tolerate in Europe or in the United States a government which does not submit to the power of a financial oligarchy. Now what these guys are up against is like as which Felix Rahat really typifies is they represent a financier oligarchy which says Clusters of these bankers are going to run the world, and no government will challenge the authority of these bankers, of their money. That's what the issue is. And they, they not only use the threat of financial campaigns against politicians and their constituencies, they also kill. They commit murders. They murder officials. They murdered Kennedy. They murdered uh, McKinley. They murdered uh, other people en masse. They are killers. They don't do it personally, generally. They give the orders. And they can find Nazi types like the Pinochet types and so forth who will go out and carry out those orders. That's the way it's done. So there is a genuine fear of these bankers or these financier interests among people who know that they hire killers. Most of the assassinations of the world are run, orchestrated by these financial agencies. They kill. They are poisonous cockroaches in our system, inhabiting the pores of our system. And that's what the problem is. People are afraid of them. Again, the answer, as I said just a while ago, the answer is if you don't have a sense of immortality, of an immortal interest in your life. You don't have the source of courage to make the kinds of decisions that challenge power evil like that. 
What they represent, what Felix Rohatten typifies in his own small way, is Satan. You want a figure for Satan? That's him. Not him personally as such, but he typifies what is satanic in society today. This is the evil. And people are afraid to stand up against evil. They say, look, I'm willing to do whatever is possible to reform the society for the better. But look, don't get me in trouble. <laughs>